So I'm um, okay. I'm recording now. So welcome everybody. So this is a very quick masterclass. I'll try to keep it under one hour. I know that I take a lot of time when I do this kind of stuff, but I try to keep it under one hour. And um, the goal of this masterclass is to open your eyes and open your mind. Some of the things that I'm going to be sharing here, you probably already know them, but not from the angle that I am going to be sharing them from. Okay, so I want you to open your mind to learn and just really be receptive to whatever thing I'm going to be sharing with you today. Okay, so the key focus of this class, of this conversation, is that you're going to learn ways where you can market your one product, you can market other of your products with the efforts that you put into marketing one product. And I'm going to make it practical. I use examples that you can relate to. I also use your examples, the businesses that you guys run, and you can see that in action. Addition, in addition to that, you're also going to learn creative ways that you can market your businesses, whatever thing that you sell. Now, one key thing, marketing is very, very important in business. You need to be able to get customers in, you need to be able to keep those customers and just keep, you know, taking that circle round and round and round. But it doesn't start with marketing. Yes, it doesn't start with marketing. Marketing is very important. Marketing helps you stay afloat as a business but it doesn't start with marketing. And that's where a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of people here. And that's why you will see a lot of do this <clears throat> and you also want to do it. That's why you see Mr. A do that and you also want to do it because, because you feel like, oh, he's working for this person. What if what you are trying to do, the, the thing that you're trying to build is different from what this person is building, all right? So the very first place that marketing starts from is the foundation, which is, because I'm not going to waste time in here, I'll just say, what is your why? Why are you running your business? So if I ask somebody here now, why are you running your business? Don't worry, I'll share the tips with you, but let's start with the, from the foundation. Why are you running your business? Who can tell me why they're running their business? Why are you running your business? To help businesses simplify their business process using that digital. Why, that's that's what you do. Uh, okay, like easing their business process. That's what I do. That's why. <clears throat> okay. Who else? Okay, that's where you go. Ease their business process. I'd, okay. I'd, 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 I'd like to. I'd like to say. I'm doing my business because I'm passionate about about solving a problem, but it's actually to make money. To make money, that's your why. Okay. Yes. Who else? What's your why? Uh, Modukbe. To make money. To make money. Okay. One more person. What's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing? To make money and also show others how they can do the same. Hmm. That's what you do. That's not your why. That's what you do. You guys. Time freedom. You guys. That's where the problem is. That's why you feel restricted, like you cannot do something outside that. And that's why you say, oh, I don't know what content to create. Oh, this marketing thing. I don't know what to do about it because you don't really, I will not say you don't have a why. <clears throat> you do have a why, but you don't know it yet. Now, everybody wants to make money. Let's be honest with ourselves. Yes, I want to make money. You want to make money. And sometimes what made you start your business is because you are trying to survive. You are trying to make ends meet. But if you tie the reason why you're running that business to only survival, you are going to be in a very big trouble, like a very big one. So tying your business to only survival or to only a need that is peculiar to you or a need that you benefit from, or to only something that you do for them, you're already putting yourself in a box. That means you cannot do anything outside that picture. So for the person who say, oh, to help businesses, you know, do this and that, that is a box. You cannot think anything outside of that box. You can't do anything outside that box. For the one who say, I want to make money, then if you're not making money, you're already in trouble because you're already feeling like, I'm exhausted, I'm tired of this business. Because the money that you're making you run the business is no longer there. So you're already in a very big problem. So your why should be tied to a very 
a need that is driven by what you believe in right be driven by either what you believe in something that you've struggled with or the thing that drives you so now even though you start your business you started your business because of survival you have to ask yourself why am i actually why do i why do i want to keep doing this business you have to find a why and tie it to that all right so i'll give you guys an example um one of one i think last two weeks or three weeks ago i was opportune to sit in a room where the founder of just right actually came to speak who how many people know just right here if you're in lagos you know just right just right superstars okay great you know just yeah, right. no. okay great so if you look at just right what do you think just right is what do you think just right does from just looking at them The sell there is superstore. Superstore that just sells stuff, right? Yes. They connect. They connect wholesalers to uh, end users. Mm, wholesalers to end users. Okay. Okay. Who else wants to try? A superstore that sells only Nigerian products. Mm, okay. Cool. Now, what does a superstore? What business does a superstore super have with giving out electric mara, keke mara, that's the auto, what they call it, the auto ritual? What business does a superstore have with doing that? Do you think they are lying? It's kind of conflicting, but I don't know. But what I'm business lying. do you think a superstore I don't think has? Have, okay. What business do you think a superstore have with giving people, you know, developing a system where they run only on solar system and then eventually start to you know empower people empower more houses and families and people with solar systems what business does a superstore have with that a superstore is supposed to just sell stuff come and buy stuff you're selling stuff to people okay you're connecting wholesalers to that's what you are doing what business does a superstore have with that okay csr csr okay we'll come to csr well let's leave it there even though it's CSR, it is ties to something bigger, right? Yeah, partnership, all of these things ties to something bigger. Now, let me tell you what the founder of... Okay, Lisbeth, you want to say something? Yes, um, good evening. So I wanted to say, looking at the word superstore, so a superstore could be anything, okay. like as long as it's a store, so you could store different things in it. So they're giving out a camera or giving out solar, panels so for LC. So I believe they, they see a vision in that and they feel they can prefer solutions to people that are in need of that. So they decide to invite that into their business as well. Okay. That's that it. makes sense. Now this this thing that you just said is the why. This thing that you just said is the why of that business. I'm going to break it down to you. I mean if, if you can go and Google you can go and Google just write history and read about it. So when he came he was talking and he said that the why of just right why they created just right right where well it started from in a place of need where they were trying to buy stuff around where they stay they stayed in a very suburban area right in Ota. that's where he and the family were staying and whenever they want to buy stuff or they want to live like people that are in lekki they have to come to town to buy stuff right so because of the nurse will let them open a shop so they open a shop in that area where they can now sell stuff that people can get that was what made them open that shop right but now over time they said that they now realize that we have to tie this thing to something bigger than just what made us open it and then it started with looking back at why did they open this store in the first place the reason why they opened it was because it was a struggle going to you know to town to buy stuff you know buying all these things especially in suburban areas and rural areas even though they have the money to pay for it they don't have the access to easily access these things now that's what now made them to create their why their why is to help people achieve their aspiration in the sense that help achieve their aspiration to live the life that they see those people in tv those people in urban areas urban area live and what is the life that urban area and tv people live what is that life constant electricity access to you know different things so that's why they are superstore they don't only sell food items or like gender they don't only sell food items they don't only sell cosmetics and everything they sell generator they share anything 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 that goes anything that involves 
get, helping them and show that anything that involves helping them ensure that they have people achieve that aspiration of living a life that looks like the one they see on tv and those people in the urban area that is their why now with this why they can sell anything they can do anything and that is why they can even now introduce electric giving people electric um doing solar systems because if you look at that does it come to that why or not it does, it does absolutely good but when you say what does just right do just right sell stuff they sell a lot of things right they sell food items they sell this that's what they do what do they do for people they sell items cheaper they sell nigerian main items you know they, they connect wholesalers to retailers that's what they do but what is the why what is that thing that is driving them now because of this thing they can create different kind of campaigns they can you know do different type of csr different types of initiative that will help them stand out and even if it looks like other people too are doing it it will make them look different because it is tied to what what they believe in ties to what drives them so now you are here right now on this call right you're here right now on this call yes you started your business because you wanted to make money you started your business because you feel like oh um this thing i um i need to solve this problem so while in the process of wanting to make money right you must have discovered something you must have discovered that probably this thing that i'm doing people are not doing it the way they should do it and that pisses you off and because of that you really want to do this thing in a in a way to help people achieve a certain goal either in their life or in their person i'll use myself as an example let's not look like Oh, hello, is using somebody else and she's going too big, too big. Let me use myself. When I started my business, it was on survival mode. I wanted to survive. I was broke. I did have a job. I applied to hundreds of jobs. I got some interviews and, and but then I got I didn't get any. Then I said, okay, let me find something to do online. So I started learning different skills. And then I learned Facebook advertising specifically. So I then running Facebook so that I would have small, small money and all of that. So in the process of doing that, I now realized that there is actually more. The problem why many people's ad don't work, right? It's not even because of the ad itself. It's because of other things that compile to that, which is what? Those other things that makes it up include the, the content you use for the ads, your page you know making sure that your page is attractive and it looks very trustworthy and believable so many other things the people that you target with the ads and many other things like that and then it begins because of what drives me because of what i believe in i believe that people should be able to get results when they invest money in something right because of that belief i'm like no you know what if i want to do this even though it's for survival even though i want to make money from it I need to make sure that I do this thing well in a way where people are able to understand and see results. Then slowly I shifted from Facebook advertising only and I added more things, right? What are the more things I added? I added sales funnels, I added, you know, launching online courses, creating strategies. While in the process of doing that, I realized that Facebook advertising alone is not the only thing that people need to actually make money. The, the, the people need to actually sell their products. That's why I started building on marketing. But now, that's just the journey, a very short one. Now, that's not the reason why I decided to move. You can just stay only on Facebook advertising and be doing that. But the reason why I moved from here, 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 here is because of what is driving me. The reason why I moved from here, 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 I didn't stay only on Facebook advertising is because of what is driving me. And what is that thing that is driving me? That thing that is driving me is that so many of these things are very technical and for me i don't like technical things i hate things that are so complicated because it drives me crazy so i now said okay so how can i make meaning out of this thing that i am doing so you have to start asking yourself this thing that i'm doing for survivor how can i make meaning out of it for not just myself but also for the people that i want to sell to or the people that i am selling to so when I realize, okay, how can I make meaning out of this? I started seeing that, oh, as I'm going through this process and through this step, I started to make small, small money from making 5K to 10K to 
20, 50, 100, millions, and just like that. And then I also now looked back to where I'm coming from. Where I'm coming from is where every two days I used to beg for 500 Naira to buy data. Yes, every two days I beg for 500 Naira to buy data. You heard me right. Every two days, where I'm coming from. Do you get it? So now I looked at that and I said, okay, what is the thing that actually led me to this point where I cannot even pay hundreds of thousands of Naira, even million to learn something from somebody else? I realized that is the unique skills that I have, the expertise building on that. So I'm not saying, how can I make meaning out of what it is? So that it doesn't just look like, oh, I'm having people do marketing, do this, do that. My why, my why technically is to help people achieve financial freedom, freedom, I beg your pardon, using their unique skills, talent, and expertise, and by creating opportunities with what they have readily available to them. So you are here today because of that why that I have. The reason why I'm doing this class is because of that why. Even though the class is saying marketing, even though the class is saying, oh, I will show you how to do creative ways to market your product. If you look at it, then now let me ask you guys, if you look at it, to help people achieve financial freedom using their unique skills, talent, and expertise, and by creating opportunities with what they have readily available to them. Do you think what we're doing right now is sort of doing that? Sort of doing that. Now, yeah. this is just this is just one of it. I have the Grow Conference coming up in June 15, which is sort of like a free event where I'm bringing speakers from different industries, people that have made, you know, that have done a lot of things, billions of naira I'm talking about, have influence and all of that, bringing them to the Grow Conference to come and speak and talk to you, to the people that the attendees are going to be at the Grow Conference, to teach them give them access to their resources, share their, their, their experiences with them. Now, I'm going to ask again, does that Grow Conference align with what my why is? Which is how people pay financial freedom with their unique skills, talents, and expertise, and creative opportunities that is readily available to them. Yes, yes it does. Yes, it does. Yes, Beautiful. It does. Beautiful. Now, if I had said that, if I had said that, oh, my why is to just make money, that means, if I'm not making the money, then it's over. Or if I tell that my why is to help people market their products, that means anything outside marketing, it is over. I'm actually doing, I'm actually going to roll out some more things in coming months. After the Grow Conference, I'll roll out some more things that does not even involve marketing. But it's still tied to this why. Can you guys see that? Are you getting my point? Does anybody have yes, a question to ask before I move on? Don't worry, I will share with you the creative marketing ideas. Don't worry about that. I'll share it with you. But you need to have this foundation first. So that way you're thinking about this. You're thinking from a place of understanding. A, a place of deep understanding. So do, do, does anybody have any question for me? You can ask me. Yeah, sorry, I have a question. Uh, okay. Please so my ask. question is um all right thank you so my question is in the process of trying to grow your why like to to make your why to be known to the world and to like impact lives and it's really taking a longer time like the journey is just so slow so how what advice can you give to someone to like stay on the track and not give up in that process thank you Hmm, very interesting. Thank you for that question. So in the, in the process of trying to stay, stick to your why, and it seems like it's very slow and you feel like you want to, you want to give up, right? What can you do to help a person stay on track? The first answer yeah. is think about your why again. Is your why strong enough? Is your why strong enough? So let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yesterday night, I cried. Yesterday night, before I went to bed, I laid on my bed and I cried. In fact, last week too, I cried. In fact, the other week before, I cried. Why was I crying? I was crying because of the Grow Conference. That's why I was crying. Because I felt like, oh, 
I was crying because of the Grow Conference because I felt like we have a few days left and some of the things that I need, some of the resources that I need to make this happen is not here yet. And I was like, in fact, when we were promoting the Grow Conference and in May, in May, I almost decided to turn it to a virtual event. I almost decided to call all the speakers, call everybody and say, you know what, let's not do it physical again, let's do virtual because that will save a lot of cost and resources. But then what was the thing that kept me together? I thought about my why again. Hello, what is your why? Why are you doing this in the first place? Are you doing it because you just want to bring people together to gather this? Uh, or are you doing it because, oh, you want people to know that, oh, you host an event? Or why are you really doing it? So I thought about that why, which I've already read to you guys. I thought about that why, and that was why I said, you know what? We are going to do it. That thing is what will keep you going. If it's so, if it is not something, if it's not strong enough to keep you going, then it's not your way. That's no, you have to rethink it again. We're going to get there. We have you have to now rethink again. Is that really why I'm doing this? The reason why I'm doing the Grow Conference, for example, is not just to bring people together. Why? It's not just to bring people together. Oh, hello, bring people. Together. No, but people say, ah, hello, this young girl is able to bring this number of people together. Ah, she's very this. That's not why I'm doing the Grow Conference. Yes, the end goal, part of the end goal might be that, oh, I will make some money from it. Yes, I will get some publicity, media this, media that, I'll get some recognition. Those are just et cetera. Those are just things, like those are not like byproducts of the actions that I take. But the bigger reason why I am doing the GROW conference is because I want to help people create financial freedom using their talent, their skills, their expertise, and create opportunities by looking at the opportunities that is readily available to them. There's a lot of opportunities around you. Some of you have the talent, some of you have the skills, some of you have the expertise, some of you have the ideas, but you're not able to leverage the opportunities that is already readily available to you. That is what, why I am doing the Grow Conference. So anything that makes me now pass this step that I'm taking for that to happen, that means I have truncated my why indirectly in that way. And so I'm already going to elongate. That means if I don't do it now, I will do it again. One day, one day, I must do it. So see that I do it now so that by the next one day, one day, I'll move to the next level of that thing that I am doing. Or I let fear or imposter syndrome hold me down and then I don't do it now. And then I wait, and then later I will still come back and do it. So that is what kept me going. I still keeping me going. After I finish crying, I'll come back, I'll keep pushing, and we'll keep going. So, how do you come up with your why? Like I said, coming up with your why is very, very is, is a series of different things. Look at what you're currently doing, right? Look at the thing that drives you. Look at the thing that you believe in. And then look at the thing that you're doing. Like, okay, how can I make more meaning with this thing that I am doing? Look at where you're coming from. In fact, you can even sit down. You can even sit down. Great. You got this. Thank you so much. You can even sit down. Thank you for not making it virtual alone. <laughs> yes, that's why I didn't make it virtual. I've been doing it virtually for three years now. So this is the next step. Now, you can even sit down and look at the thing that brought you to starting this business that you're doing. Whether you like it or not, everybody has a story that led them to what you're doing right now. You do not just wake up. You do not just wake up and say, ah, I'm starting this business. Something, you have gone through something before you landed on the current business that you're running. All right? So you need to sit down, look at that journey, look at what you're currently doing, look at what drives you, what do you believe in? What is going on out there? What are people doing? Does it pisses you off that, ah, no, I want to solve this problem. And then create, ask yourself, the final thing you will now do is, how do I create more meaning with this thing that I am doing? That is how you come up with a very beautiful why. Okay, that's how you come up with a very beautiful why. Of course, there are other processes that you need to go through to really break it down. And many of those processes I created it in a framework that I called 
I call the framework PABS. So P A B P P P S. It's a seven step framework. P A B P P P S. So the first one is personal clarity, understand where you're coming from. Audience clarity, understand your audience. Brand clarity, understand the kind of brand. What are you doing? What are you building? Right? Personality, who is your brand? What, what is the human character you're building around this brand? Then your products and services, what are you selling? What are you actually selling with this business that you're doing? Then your promotions, how are you actually selling this thing? Then your story, what is the story that you have to tell? What story, what are the stories that you have to tell in terms of how you started your brand, in terms of why did you create a specific product, in terms of what your audience are going through? Now, this seven step process will help you, you know, find your why typical. And um, I'm not going to go deep into that because I've done justice um, with that by um, doing it, like writing it in depth in my book. So this is the manuscript of a book that I am working on. This is the manuscript, you guys saw it first. So this is the manuscript of a book that I'm working on. This is the PAPS framework, and you can see the personal clarity, audience clarity, brand clarity, personality, products, promotion, and story. Now, if you look at personal clarity, you can see that who you are and what problem can you solve in the marketplace. So it's more about looking at your journey. And I have also included templates and things that can help you look at that very well. Now we have the second one, which is who you serve. So who is your audience? Who are the people that you're trying to serve? Or who are the people you're trying to reach with the solution that you are offering, right? With all the step-by-step -step that I put here, you will be able to create your own and be able to identify those people. And once you're able to identify them, you're getting closer to finding out your why. Now, the third one is what are you building? What are you building that's brand clarity? And that's where I really broke down the why a lot. This why is gotten from Simon Sinek, right? He's the one that created the golden circle. And that's why the why was better from why, how, what. So a lot of people talk about their how and their what. When I was asking you guys, uh, what is your why? Many of you was, were telling me your how and your what, not your why. Okay, so I broke that down in depth and how you can actually create that why for yourself as well. Now, if you see, there are exercises, there are cheat code that you can use to do that inside the book. Then we have the other step, who is your brand? What personality? Now, when people think about Eloha, Eloha has this energy, or oh, Eloha is very, you know, down to earth. That's, that's may not, that may not be my personal my real, real self, uh, it's not like I'm pretending, I'm not pretending, that's what I want my other people to see my brand as. So as digital creator chic, that's what I am. But as Ella, I'm a very introverted person, but people don't believe me. I am extremely introverted, people don't believe that I'm introverted. And that's okay, Sha. <laughs> Let's move on. Then we have the, what are you selling? What are your products and services? How can you create products and services that not only tie to your why, but also serve your audience, okay? Then what are you selling? Uh, how are you selling? So how are you going to do promotions? So this is what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. I'm going to share specifically how are you going to sell, which is the creative ways for you guys. Okay, I'm going to share this specifically with you guys, the how are you selling? So you see that what I'm sharing with you is a bigger, is a, just one fraction of a bigger picture. But that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys tonight. Okay, um, there are different, the first one is, creating a marketing chain. The second one is leverage collaboration for opportunities. I'm going to explain. The third one is don't sleep on traditional marketing. We have combining, um, then we have the, the fifth one that's sampling and freemium. We have the sixth one that um, invest in a cost bigger than what you sell, which is CSR that Iberi talked about. The fourth one is assemble a team of marketing geniuses. So I'm going to share this with you guys, which is the what are you selling part of this book. Then after that, we also have stories. So what stories do you have to tell about your brand that can help you create an emotional connection? Now, if you've been listening to me, I've shared my story, even though in a very summarized way to you guys, and some of you might feel inspired. I'm like, oh my God, you know, sort of. Everybody has a story to tell. Maybe you don't know it yet, even, even though you are just starting your business. Then, yeah, so that's what the book is really about that I've shared in depth. So with everything that I have said, you can typically take what I've just said, look at what are you doing, who, who are the people you are selling to or you're trying to sell to, right? Then look at what drives you, what do you believe in? What are the key things that drive you? 
what are the key things that you've seen that is pissing you off in this area that you are, that you are solving a problem um in this area that you are solving a problem in right and then ask yourself how can you make meaning so from everything that i've said does anybody is there any light bulb moments for anybody here that you feel like you sort of like already figured your why out a little bit any light bulb moments for anybody here Okay, God's will, can share. Yes, personally, I've always been about uh, helping people simplify their uh, systems, helping people show up for themselves. So it has been about that because one one thing I know that makes a lot of people not really go as far is not being able to stand out, not be able to show up. So for me, I feel like with what you've said, I have somehow, I've always been invested about helping people come out and then from there we can then market and the rest of that. But it's always been about showing up. Hmm. So how do you so, think from what I've said now has triggered your wife? Has triggered, uh, uh, like open your eyes to see your wife from another angle. Yes, uh, first off, if you thought, from what you said, it's very clear that if it's all about money, you talk about frustration, which is very true. Particularly if I've I have been I have engaged in multiple businesses. Um I've I've done one time I've done mini importation, one time I've done this and that. And sometimes you get frustrated with the fact that you're not making money. But then if you connect your dreams to a larger cause, something that it's ambiguous something that it's more than just something you can see and touch at every moment then i think with what you said it's easier for one to keep going because mm -hmm. you know that the cause is larger than something that is just superficial so it's mm -hmm. it's really that's really what hits me so in, even okay. if i am not making money am i helping somebody am i really making an impact so i think that is actually the cause all right great that makes right. sense um, Elizabeth, you can after Elizabeth, Idara will go. Then for a berry, we are going to use it as, a, as an experiment on this one. Um, so Elizabeth, please speak. All right, thank you. So I actually want to speak on uh, the perspective of my job. So I have okay. a nine to five job here okay. aside my business. So I remembered when I, I joined the, the company. So I was made the business development uh, manager. I okay. actually joined as a customer service, but they just changed my job role. So I had no experience in business, like sales. I don't have any experience in it at all. So it was really a hard time for me, like very, very hard because, you know, it comes with a lot of frustrations. And at a point, you just want to like give up because you're not really getting mm -hmm. the expectations. Like those, that thing you want is not really coming. So at the point of giving up, now tonight, while you were sharing um, your story and everything, now we're just thinking all around it because it has gotten to the point where I was, I was almost giving up, yeah. So I just started thinking and I'm like, okay, if I can excel in sales, like, because I know there are so many people going through the same thing I'm going through at the moment. Like, I mean, some people in sales, like newbies in sales, that mm -hmm. they're just, they don't have that patience to wait because mm -hmm. it's it's come sales come with a lot of a lot of frustration. So I just yes. I need to put my head yes. into this. I need to endure and I need to win so I can have a story and I can be able to help other people that are coming up that you know initially they don't have passion for sales, but on the long run they can actually develop passion for it. So you know while you're speaking, I was just seeing That's myself it. doing all of those things like yeah, I'm gonna do this. So thank you. Amazing. So go for it. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay, Dara. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Sorry, I have a bit of a cold just in case. Sorry, Sorry. no problem. The weather okay, is cold. Um, yes. So um, I would like to add from the question the a girl asked earlier about if your why is not forthcoming. Okay. Listening to you and listening to your journey just made me realize that um your why may not come immediately but it's a process it's a leading mm -hmm. process to where your why or to where your why Absolutely. is yes yes so um 
you have to that process is not saying that your why is not for coming it's saying yeah. that you need to work on yourself in such a way that you'll be able to bring forth your why because if you say your why is to help people you have to get to a point that you are capable of helping people mm -hmm. so listening to your story you said you spent over three years doing your 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 lessons visual visual and i'm mm -hmm. like okay fine these three years was not that she was just relaxing i never wanted to have a physical class but Absolutely. she was working on something she mm -hmm. was preparing herself for this physical class mm -hmm. so that process to your why is a very important is a very important period because yes. it's to teach you a lot for you to be able to enable yourself enough mm -hmm to be able to carry out your why effectively. Yes. So thank you very much. From your story, I've learned that we should be patient. I know that so far we are we are focused on our why. We'll surely I get love there. it. I love it. And now this is going to make me state another point. Your why is not usually very clear at the beginning. It's something you have to keep building on. Now exactly. let me tell you guys. So in 2021, when I started the Go Conference as an IG Live series, why did I start the Go Conference? It wasn't even called the Go Conference then. It was called an IG Live series in 2021. I just knew that I wanted to help people like me who are coming from where I am coming from, which is a very, you know, even lower than average background. I, we stayed, I grew up in a house where it is raining, we put buckets here, buckets there, you know, so that the water will not go here, you sleep here. Sometimes we do short puts, you know, and throw people inside bush. That's the kind of place that I grew up in. So when I was now, coming to learn digital skills, you know, having this talent, it was a struggle for me because I could never afford many of these things. So I just knew that, I don't know I said, Lord, if you get out of this, eh? if you get out of this, you are, you should, you definitely help people. You should definitely help people know. Now, I'm going to also share this. It's been a long time I've shared this. I'm also a two-time rape survivor, rape victim and survivor, sort of. Now, that experience also is something that is driving me. Like, body they pepper me looking at that experience i want to help people young girls you know who are living life because like okay i'm just settling that oh this is the opportunity that i have this is what is in my space you know and i just want to relax here those were the things that were just driving me they were just those were the things that were just driving me i didn't really have the clear picture of what that why was yet three years four years ago but i just knew that as somebody that's a real survivor and this is this that coming from this place and I'm building myself up. I want to find a way to help people. So I started from this small place, like what Idara said, from this small place where I can make a difference. This guy said something today on Akoya, the, the chess guy. He said, you can do big things from a small place. So, so many of us were waiting for when, oh, we, we turn to Dangote, you be done to those big brands. No, you can actually do big things from a very small place. So that's another thing I want you to keep at the back of your mind. Don't just say, oh, okay, a lot has it figured out. So I have to have my wife figured out for me to be able to, um, you know, do this thing. No, let think about what drives you. What are the experiences that you've gone through? What are the, what, what are the things that you're seeing out there that pisses you off so much that you want to change? Those are the, that's where you pick your wife from. What's your story? What's the story that, where are you coming from? I have so many things that I want to do, even outside my brand, Digital Creatorship. I want to empower young girls. I want, I want, I want to be an advocate for domestic violence, um, for girls who are, you know, going through abuse or all of that, rape survivors. I want to do that, but not as digital creator chick brand, but as just lucky Ella as a person. But that does not mean that as digital creator chick, that anger in me that is peppering me is not being reflected in my brand as digital creator chick because I still feel that anger. Like, okay, how can I do it in a business way? And how can I do it in a personal way? So in a business way, all this is I'm doing right now is what I'm doing. In a personal, because I know that when somebody is empowered, one person, when somebody is financially free, there are some things that you will not settle for. There are some things that you will not allow. I allowed a lot of things in my life because I, I was not, I didn't have those opportunities and resources available to me. So now I don't want other people to do the same. And that's the thing, that's the thing that's just driving me. So the more it drives me crazy, the more I don't want to settle. And the more I don't want to stop. Does that make sense? Awesome. Great. So think about those things that drives you. 
these things that has happened. So, Eberi, you are now on the hot seat. You can unmute yourself. You say you don't know your why yet. So I'm just going to have actually like a couple of questions and you just ask. We may not be able to figure your why on this call, but you can get okay. like a little bit of picture. Like I said, it's not something that you get. Even now with what I've told you guys, my why, every, next year it can improve. But it's still, in, it will still be in the same angle. You can keep improving it, improving it, improving it. But it's still, it's still, if you look at it, it's still in the same, the same angle, right? So that's it. Yeah. So let's start with you. So let me read what you dropped in the chat. You said, I don't know my why yet. I don't know. I just know I am determined to learn right now and grow career-wise. Hopefully, I guess you know it soon. Because right now, it's just to create a better life for myself. But yeah, I love the process. I'm passionate about what I do. It's really not about the money right now. I just love being in the creative and strategy space. OK, so what do you do? Um, marketing. I'm in marketing, yeah. What do you marketing do? marketing as right now. What do you so do? I... Sorry? What do you do? Are you in marketing? I don't understand. Break it down. Okay, so I I write contents, and um, basically write contents to help brands um grow, mm -hmm. make sales and likes. So, yeah. Okay. So how did you get here? What did you study in school? Oh, I studied computer science. <laughs> computer science. So how did you move from that to that to here? What happened? Is there any um, significant thing that happened? Yeah, so my story is kind of crazy, yeah. Um, I started out as a poet, yeah, in 2019. And a friend in church read my poem once upon a time on WhatsApp. And he was like, I think you're going to do well in content writing. And um, <clears throat> I started from content writing and I fell in love with the journey. Like mm, okay, creating cool. strategies. So now like being a poet. What... All right, great. Can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, now. I said, I said, okay, great. So, how did your poet journey begin? When did you start writing poetry? Oh, yes, I started from being um, discriminated. Let me use that word. Uh -huh. So, I went to a secondary school. I went to secondary school in the east, and um, my classmates didn't really socialize with me because I couldn't speak the language, which is Igbo, and. Um, uh -huh. I got people with everybody, the principal, headmistress, I don't get punished and the rest of it. So I kind of withdrew into myself and I had to start writing. In place of talking to people, I just wrote. So that was how my poetry journey began. Yeah. And I felt that I could express myself more in words mm -hmm. than um, verbally, basically. So basically, if we look at it, even though it's not evident in the physical life that you live, like in what your parents' reality, right? we yeah. can say that the thing that drives you or the thing that drove you and led you to this place is that occurrence if i even ask you deeper questions and go back 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 right you might find yeah. one place, but we don't want to sleep here but the reason why i said let me ask you questions so that after this call you go back and go and start thinking and this, right. way, this is what did my book that i that i'm just that i'm that's going to be come, that's going to be released june 15th is going to do help you sit down and think now think that process where you felt that discrimination, you felt like, oh, you are not like the other people. And so you withdrew into yourself and started writing poetry. That's why I started honing your skill. Now, you didn't even really see that poetry as anything, like anything important. You just felt, yeah. oh, I'm just needing to, you know, be in my space and be myself, right? But then until somebody yeah. called you out and said, oh, this is good, you can actually excel in content marketing. And then you now do what? You now pivot and I started doing content marketing. How about if you tie your wife to something, helping people feel like people feel like they are abnormal, they are not like the rest of people. That's one. Another thing could yeah. be people who are doing something good, but they don't really see any meaning in it. You helping them see meaning. Okay. Now this meaning can now be what expertise do you have? Because you cannot do your why outside what you know. Right now, what you know is content marketing. You don't know. You don't know how to cook, you don't know how to bake, you don't know how you are not a caterer. So you can now say, because my expertise is in content marketing, I want to help people do that through content marketing. Look at Tunde Onokoya. I mean, I think his name is Onokoya, the chess guy. What is it? What is he doing? He's using chess because that's what he knows. Yeah. He's using chess to bring people out of slum, to help them do big things from a small place because what he knows is chess. Me, I'm using marketing and strategy because that is what I know. 
Okay. So your why is already in front of you. So helping people who feel like, oh, what they are doing is not, there is like, what they are doing is just basic. Like there is nothing meaningful in this thing that they are doing. Helping them be able to see that. And those people feel like, oh, I'm an abnormal person or I'm being discriminated. Helping them see that there's a place for them. And how you can do that can be through poetry or through content marketing that you already know. Church please. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It actually makes sense right now. Absolutely. Uh, I was, yeah, I've been writing and I think I'm going to um, sit back after the class tonight and go over it because I think I already found my wife. <laughs> yes. So your wife has, yeah. there's something that is driving you. Sometimes you don't know it yet because you've not sat down to talk, to think about it. Something is driving mm -hmm. all of us. All of us, no matter what, if you like, even tell the last step, something is driving him. Even the children always say they're born inside world. Something is driving them. Mm. No matter how Thank small you so the that story is. Can you can we can we can we can we close now? Can you guys say that even though I, if I don't share the marketing tips I want to share with you guys, can we close? <laughs> no, we need more. <laughs> Look at you people. You people exactly. <laughs> is it lovely? Let's, Let's continue. <laughs> I thought I was going to keep this class under mm -hmm. one hour, but <laughs> I know that one I want to joke. But yeah, but I hope you guys have gotten something to this point so far. Any question before I now move to marketing? Because I'm I'm going to switch entirely from what I've said into something else. Say video. Ah, <laughs> you guys, you guys, please oh. Hi, Instagram people. I'm actually live on Instagram as well hi if you're watching on instagram yeah we're actually having a class okay any question from uh, from you guys for we'll move to the marketing any question no question okay so we should we should move on it's like what if you don't know your why I, i've just said it now what the exercise I just did with a baby right now, you can just simply do that with yourself. If you don't know your why you're on this call, the exercise I just did with a baby, just do that with yourself. If you're just joining, maybe you can just watch the replay. But I go, I went in depth in my book, so you can go and get a copy of that book. Ah, uh, this recording, I feel I never know. Or the criteria to get the recording is you have to pre-order my book. Maybe, I don't know yet. I'm thinking about it. I'll let you guys know when I decide. All right. Is there no questions? Okay, great. So yeah, go back and think about it. See me as a use see me as a scapegoat. <laughs> okay, now we are now going to shift. Now, why didn't I start with the creative marketing idea that I want to give you guys? If I start with that, you're not going to see value in it. Well, the reason why I started with that why. Is so that you can see value in whatever tips that I'm going to be giving you now. Because after this call, you're not only going to be thinking about these tips, you're also going to be thinking about something bigger in the picture. Because any the tips I'm the tips I'm giving you now is for people who who are ready to do we get the book even as a member of CLB. This book is not a part of CLB. You have to pre-order the book. Everybody is a new book that I'm just writing, it's not even published yet. It will be out on June 15th. Which is on the day of the conference. You can pre order as a hardcover or you can pre order as an ebook. So, this book is not part of CLB. Yeah, CLB is actually one of my courses, course launch blueprints. So, if you're a part of CLB, you should still get the book. You can pre order it. I dropped the link in the chat not quite long ago. Um, I'm dropping it again. You can go there and pre order the ebook version or pre order the, the physical book and you'll get it on the day of the conference. If you cannot come for the conference, we'll send it to you in your house. Um, yeah. So the book is still undergoing printing, but I finished the manuscript. So it's a new book, actually. All right. So now let's go to creative ways to market. How can you use one product to sell other products? 